so I spend the last week going hands-on with some pretty hidden but at the same time pretty game-changing smartphone tech and smartphones so here are 7 amazing things to look forward to do you remember that crazy iPhone 6 concept with the built-in projector and the laser keyboard for typing it felt like something out of a sci-fi movie but less than 10 years later we've actually got something that's better Samsung showed us their selfie type feature of their users just their phone selfie camera to create a virtual keyboard but instead of firing out a laser that would need a perfectly flat surface to work and would consume a ton of battery this tag actually tracks the movement of your fingers which means it doesn't actually matter what you tap just the gestures you're making with your fingers then I got some exclusive time with this concept smartphone by a company called Sense All and you'll see what I mean when I say it's pretty revolutionary so this is a company that works on creating force touch sensors sensors that can set below a surface undetect not just touch but pressure and they've worked with a company called Vision Hawks to create a prototype phone to really show you what this means there's a few obvious benefits like not needing physical buttons on the sides of your phone but the more I use this tech the more I started to realize the full potential for starters having purely software based buttons means you can configure everything which buttons are shown how far up and down they are so you can reach for them easier and even which side of the phone they're on all of a sudden left handed users can actually have a phone that feels like it had them in mind but that stuff's relatively basic when I said these sensors can detect pressure I didn't just mean they can distinguish between a hard and a soft press they can pick up about 3000 levels of pressure which creates some interesting news cases the company were demoing the idea of using pressure to scrub through a video and using it just makes sense instead of fiddling around dragging a progress bar at the bottom of your video you could just squeeze to go forward or back and the harder you squeeze the faster you'll move through the video in a gaming scenario you could be racing and the more pressure you apply on the pedals the more of a response you would get let's say you're in the camera app you can rotate your phone and with this your shutter button can always rotate to stay in the right position plus your small fan gains the ability to focus with light pressure on the shutter and then snap a photo with a harder press just like you used to on a DSLR and there were a ton of demos like this but how does this technology actually tie into the next generation of phones well the company offers a full sheet of these sensors which means you can grant the entire screen including a phone's curved edges this ability to detect pressure you can think of it as your smartphone suddenly having access to another dimension of touch information it'll be able to understand which screen touches are accidental which touches are just from your palms resting on the screen and which ones are intentional and this will be vital as we start seeing screens that trap all the way around our devices the current capacitive smartphone screen technology responds only to your fingers whereas using sensors like this mean that you could use a stylus a pencil even a paintbrush if you wanted to and while capacitive screens suffer all kinds of hell and challenging environments like in water this doesn't because it's pressure sensors can just ignore the mild background pressure from the water and focus on the harder pressure coming from your fingers you could even in theory add this tech behind the glass on the back of your phone allowing you to scroll pages or activate gestures without moving your thumbs at all sensors showed me how it works under literally any material that has the potential to flex so it would even work with wooden or leather finishes and from what I'm told the tech has come down to a level where you could get basic implementation into a phone for something like five to ten dollars as the bezels and buttons of our phones have melted away over the years the screen has become almost central interaction with our technology and so this will be pivotal especially when combined with another piece of tech I'm going to show you in a bit if by the way you're enjoying this video a sub would be awesome before I get to that other bit of tech though number five is ECMF for electronic colors materials and finishes based on one plus's concept one smartphone I can definitely see ferns in a few years shipping with a finish that can morph as of now on a plus showed off cameras that can be hidden by tinting the glass in front of them but I could see this going further imagine a device that ships with a transparent glass back panel which can then change color to match the wallpaper you apply on this front number for charging is about to become much less of a worry there's a good chance you've heard of something called gallium nitride well there's a bunch of companies like anchor who are about to go wild with this compound gallium nitride and charges can be used as replacement for silicon one that charges faster wastes less energy and can do all of this in a smaller physical footprint so for example this tiny brick here delivers 18 watts of power almost four times that of the 5 watt apple brick and as you make these gallium nitride bricks larger the power output jumps dramatically my personal prediction is that at least some smartphones either this year or next year will start shipping with ultra speed gallium nitride charges in the box the other side of that coin is a material called graphene which we've just started seeing in portable power banks graphene can be charged at a much higher power without damage so this 5000 milliamp power graphene power bank can go 
from 0 to 100% in just 18 minutes as this tech finds its way into smartphones you could expect a similar jump foldable phones are about to go mainstream and we've seen foldables already but the reason I say this now is based on what I've just seen happen in the PC market the consumer electronics so this year saw the introduction of devices like Dell's concept Ori and Lenovo ThinkPad X1 fold which look like they've already ironed out a lot of the problems we saw in first generation foldables Lenovo's hinge mechanism for example allows the device to be held in place part way through the fold and has a mechanism to keep the display creasing to an absolute minimum companies like Samsung for which Homi and TCL and many more they're all likely to announce their own foldables this year and they'll have learned from last year's mishaps creating devices that are more durable more affordable and most importantly more useful now also at the consumer electronics show I managed to find a bit of a hidden gem a smartphone based on technologies that I've never seen in a smartphone before it's by a company called Haptio who developed the concept of a tactile interface and this builds further on those pressure sensors I showed you earlier I should clarify this tech already exists in a very basic form on most small phones when you receive a call your phone vibrates when you type on your virtual keyboard you get a haptic response the difference here is that this tactile technology allows us haptics to be localized instead of your whole phone vibrating with every action this company has developed a system that can dynamically adjust the friction just below your finger which has two main benefits it saves battery because this haptic response now only needs to at a specific location and be more importantly allows you to feel texture on your firm's display but so you're listening to music man your phone is in your pocket then even whilst your screen is off you could reach into your pocket and be able to feel for a virtual key to skip tracks the booth I went to had a couple of demos like how it would affect playing a game and even though the demo itself was basic the impact this tactility had on the experience was a world apart I tried a fruit ninja style app and I could literally feel the impact of slicing tough fruit under my finger there's also a fish demo where I could feel subtle micro vibrations under each scale I turned over so why is this tech important well remember I said how we're gonna start seeing the physical buttons on your smartphones disappearing well having a tactile surface means in the same way that you feel for a physical button now you can feel for your virtual buttons as displays become ever more central to our smartphones and smart devices being able to feel through them could be the next big step let's take that foldable den over laptop I talked about earlier and probably my biggest reservation about it why I wouldn't use it is because I prefer the feel and the travel of a physical mechanical keyboard versus a virtual one that said with this kind of technology that allows you to feel texture it's perfectly possible that we could eventually have a virtual keyboard that feels like a physical one with all the advantages a virtual virtual is infinitely more portable instantly customizable and able to adapt send emojis gifts and all the cool stuff we've become used to now when smartphones first started coming a lot of people complained about the move to virtual keys but nowadays most people would struggle going back to physical so that's tactile technology and who knows maybe even in the future content could be created with this tactility in mind let's say I was planning to buy a car online in 10 years time it's perfectly possible that you'd be able to feel the car's texture through your smartphones display just a thought now on the subject of screens one plus again just recently made a statement that their upcoming one OnePlus 8 Pro smartphone will have the best display you'll see in 2020 they're working with Samsung to create a display that can refresh 120 times per second event we've seen this before on the phone but this time it is different it'll be an OLED display which also has the perk of greater contrast levels it'll have a touch response of 240 Hertz that 240 times per second it is scanning to see where your finger is and that compares to 120 times per second on an iPhone and software that can add frames into videos you're watching to make them appear even smoother on one hand this is incredible I love using high refresh rate displays and so I hope this works as well as they're promising but we will have to see how it affects battery life because that's always been my reservation with this technology displaying extra frames drains more battery we noticed this when on a plus jump last year from 60 Hertz to 90 Hertz and so going from 90 to 120 alongside this software that will now drain even more battery inserting extra frames into videos is risky and will pan out one of three ways a on a plus ends up with a fantastic display on a phone with terrible battery life b one plus ends up with a fantastic display but has to stick a massive 5000 plus million power battery inside making it thicker and more expensive than last year or c one plus figures out how to address the battery drain issue and somehow we get an absolute win win only time will tell if you enjoyed this video then i spend a lot of time putting one together about all the things you didn't know about google so i'm gonna link that from here please subscribe for new updates. Thanks for watching.
watching. See you next time.